My beautiful people, my beautiful people, my beautiful people. Welcome back to another lovely episode of the Logic of Emotions podcast slash reactions. It's your dog, it's your brother, man. It's your favorite African-Americans, Melly Baby. Hey, we're talking about some basketball, y'all. Andre Iguodala gets real about Jordan Poole. Now, I have a lot to talk about this with Jordan Poole and Klay Thompson, actually. Um, it was on the JJ Reddick's uh, uh, The Old Man in, in the Three podcast. I'm excited to hear it. Hope y'all are too, man. Like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Banks family. Join the Banks community. Roll to 10K, baby. We are on the way, man. Show some love. All right, let's get to it, man. But first, that intro. Yes, sir. I have a lot to talk about this, bro. I have a lot, I have a lot especially people that, who contradict so much about Jordan Poole during the regular season versus playoffs. I got a lot, I got a lot to talk about with y'all, a lot. By with the Warriors. And specifically, I think it's mostly Steph, Clay, and Draymond, mm -hmm. where, yeah, you want at times to be like, let's tighten up. But with Steph, you want him the space and the freedom to be creative. Mm-hmm. Clay, you want him hunting at all times. Draymond does some wild shit on the court, and that's part of his game. And I mean, but not just like fouling people. I'm talking about like he throws some wild passes sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes his rotations, you're like, dude, you're you're overhelping. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. But like he sees something maybe you don't see, so you have to allow those right. three guys a lot of stuff. I'll I say this too. For a lot of you that say Draymond Green is a liability and does nothing on the floor, do me a favor. Do me a big favor. Go outside. Go into a puddle. Put your face in there. And make sure you don't come back out. Make sure you don't come back out. Because a lot of you really, 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 really have allowed social media to think you know what the hell you're talking about. You think a former DPOY the Swiss Army knife, who can guard one through five. Not as not as good as he used to before, but he still can, by the way. Does nothing. Y'all are so obsessed with flash and, gl and glitter and all this glam. And then when I look at you and see who you are and see you play basketball, you suck. You suck. I've noticed the people who are so obsessed with glitz and glam usually aren't good at basketball or good at a sport. I've noticed that. Have y'all noticed that before? It's a very odd thing, bro. The people who love the glitz and the glamour and, oh, my God, the flashy basketball handling, they usually cannot play basketball or they usually don't understand basketball. Basketball is such a complex thing, bro. That's why I love sports because there's so much you can talk to talk about with basketball. The Draymond Green, it's from the passing, the IQ, the defensive help, the being able to hold players accountable. Stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of things that he does, bro, that a lot of you don't seem to fully understand because you think basketball's about flash, about looking cool, about scoring all the time. He doesn't do that. <laughs> and y'all sit there and call him a triple single. Well, at the same time, you would love to have him on your team. So I don't understand how that works. But when I always hear that, I usually walk away from the conversation because you obviously don't have a basketball mind. You just seem like you just don't like the person for some weird reason. And I understand why you wouldn't like Draymond Green. I get it. Don't get me wrong. You don't like his antics. I totally get it. But to say that he, a four-time NBA champion, a former DPOY, <laughs> does nothing. Yeah. yeah. I think at times, it, this is not a knock on Jordan Poole. I think sometimes at times, like with Jordan, it was like, okay, you can't then come in the game and be doing that stuff. Bingo. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's not that's not a knock on him because on – on most teams, you're like, dude, you're you're fucking great. We need you to do this role. Mm -hmm. But at times on on your team, it 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 was a was a nuisance. Yes. Correct. And I think that's why. See, I'll say this too to y'all. A lot of y'all keep bringing up this regular season nonsense and stuff like that, bro. If JJ if JJ Redick, who's been watching the season, is literally saying to you, Jordan Poole's antics, what he's been doing, has been a nuisance. Why are y'all continuously saying? That it that he that what he's been doing was not a big deal, and keep bringing up these scoring points per game. Why do y'all keep doing that? Why do y'all keep doing that? Jordan Poole's IQ is that of a goldfish. It is terrible. He has the tunnel vision of Austin Rivers. He does. I don't care about no regular season. I really truly don't. 
because when it's time to get down in the playoffs, that's what matters. And when Jordan Poole, when we got that first ring, when Curry went ballistic against the Celtics, right? He played very good. He did. He played good. He deserved his flowers. He totally did. Still, though, his defense was absolutely terrible. His rotations are absolutely awful still. He doesn't really talk on defense. He looks lost on switches. And he gets abused consistently and flops a lot, by the way. That y'all, for some reason, love to talk about Curry flopping when Curry is one of the most disrespected superstars to average a good amount of free throws, by the way. But you say nothing about Jordan Poole. This is what I mean by when I say the Jordan Poole suckers come out and start saying nonsense, right? Cool. So, again, no one cares about two years ago. Y'all keep living in two years ago, by the way. Jordan Poole now has his own basic, basic, basic team, right? He doesn't have Stephen Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, all those boys to hide him. You understand that, right? He will now be the key focus on defense. Y'all saying he's going to average 30 when the brother had a hard time scoring with all those brothers on the team. Think about that. Now the defense is really going to key in on him. Now, I won the Prove Me Wrongs. I love Jordan Poole. I love Jordan Poole when he had his uh, uh, lock bun. I love Jordan Poole. When y'all want to get rid of him, I said send him to the G League. And if he gets his hair cut to the low season, we got something. And what did he do? Exactly that. You can ask my homies, man. I told him. I told him that. So I love JP. But we got to talk about the things that is wrong with JP and what happened last year. Stop bringing up two years ago, bro. You saw them old heads that said... Back in my day, nobody cares, old man. It's over with. You did what you did, cool. But last year, bro, he was disgusting. And I mean that with, with much respect to JP. Y'all look at the points per game. I'm looking at possession by possession by with playmaking, defense, everything. Take away the scoring. Because what y'all keep doing is you keep bringing up points per game and not bringing up the other context. That's what y'all love to do. You love to bring up things to fit your narrative without the full context. Because guess what? The amount of scoring he did versus the amount of scoring he allowed might be damn near negative. Okay? Okay. And tur turnovers as well, too. Because that brother was wilding. Regular season and playoffs. But Melvin, he did this. He had this percentage. Okay. Didn't Klay Thompson also shoot a pretty good percentage? And didn't he supposed to do really good in the regular season too? So why aren't y'all? So why y'all? Why y'all trying to put the blame on Klay now? Both of them deserve the blame, bro. They both played terrible in the playoffs. Terrible. But there's a. I understand why people are going at JP more, and that's because the brother does not try on defense. At least Klay Thompson, who had two injuries, by the way. I think we forget about that. I think a lot of you who never played sports before don't understand how hard that is to come back from where he came from, right? Still try to play defense versus someone who was young and healthy. I think that's the major problem of real basketball fans and students of the game that they had with JP versus Klay Thompson. Now, Klay, he had the IQ of a goldfish too. Tunnel vision as well. Wasn't going on a low block. Trying to hit the turnaround faders. None of those. He just wanted to shoot threes all day terrible we're talking about J jp though by the way don't forget that we're talking about jp all right i know y'all want to talk about, about clay because you hate talking about your favorite daddy but we're not gonna do that all right jordan Poole has a problem he does and i hope he fixes it for this year because another in conclusion to my last problem with him is and i and i think the problem with his game is he doesn't understand his speed he goes way too fast, way too fast, nowhere. You know what I'm saying? His speed control is really good, but then it's really bad at the same time if you actually watch it in real time. You know what I'm saying? Let's continue. EP is going to help them more than some folks know, maybe more than the team knows. Not to say they don't know, but, but it also it was a hindrance to Jordan Poole. Because Jordan's like, why can't I go out there and be free like them? You know, Because you're not them. You're not them. It's simple. You're not them. You have, to, you have a role to play. Like, this is what I'm saying to y'all, man. 
Drupal has a role to play with a team like the Warriors. You don't get to just decide that you want to play a certain way because you feel like you deserve to play a certain way, bro. It's not how life works. You feel me? Now, don't get me wrong. As a starter, the brother obviously has better numbers. But guess what? You're not starting over Stephen Curry. Not in a cold day in hell. What does that mean? You have to get adjusted to being a six man. Everyone before you. By the way, who was better than you? Uh, pff, Jamal Crawford. Uh, pff, uh, Lou Williams. They embraced the role. So why can't you? You think you're better than them? Because you're not. Drill pool is no way in shape or form better. Because you know why? Consistency is way better. And those two brothers I just named were consistent buckets when they came off that bench. Jordan Poole was not. You can sit here trying to paint the narrative as much as you want. But he was not. He was not consistent. Sometimes, yes. Some weeks, yes. Absolutely. Even at time a month or two, yes. I'll give him that for sure. But when it was time to get down to the nitty gritty, he was nowhere to be found, bro. Come on. No, yeah, I don't. He doesn't have four rings. He has one, and he did win us a he won us a game in the finals. And he, he did. did do that game right. five. Actually, game five. And so he coming back like, no. Hold I, on, check this out. I want to show you something. He said that he won won him a game in game five. Check this out. I saw this. Co- I, I read all the comments by the way, from all kind of different people. Look at this. Look at the little. I, I gotta find it. But basically, someone called that out and said that's false. He didn't actually win the game. Here it is. Wait, is that it? No, it's not it. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I can find it. I'm sorry. But to kind of reiterate what they said. Oh. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Long story short, basically what, what, what they said was, that was false. He had like 14 or 15 points, and Andrew Wiggins had like 26 and like 13 boards or something like that. Like, I, I don't remember where, where the comment was, but I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, that's true. Andrew Wiggins was, was, was going insane. I remember that. I was like, so why did they keep doing that? Why did they keep making him seem like 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 he was... I, I don't know, bro. It was weird. It was weird to me. I feel like I'll find it. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I don't think I'll find it. Oh, purple per- 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 right here. Like I said, not all points are created equal when it comes to Jordan Poole. His lack of efficiency and ability to make others better. That was the other problem, too. In the, is the main reason his scoring is not valued as much for a team with champion aspirations. As much as he won the Golden State Warriors a game in the finals, I still don't think he won that game. I think Andrew Wiggins did. He was also unplayable for multiple rounds of the playoffs because his lack of defensive, his, of his lack of defensive and efficiency. Go figure. And that's the thing I don't understand. Why don't y'all just understand that, bro? Why don't y'all get that? Now, I get Klay Thompson also was a part of that for the playoffs too, bro. But understand, again, this is someone who has two major back-to-back injuries versus someone who does not, who's not injured and young and healthy. That is unacceptable, bro. Unacceptable. If you want, me, if you want to hear me bash Klay, I already did a bunch of times before in pr- uh, previous videos, so you can check those out. But when it comes to Jordan Poole, bro, I haven't really given my, the proper critiquing that, as I should have because I ain't going to lie, I was, I, was, I was a little bit biased. I, I love JP. I do. I've shown y'all that. Give me some freedom. And I'm second on the team in scoring. Average 20.4. He was second on the team in scoring. So why should I be the guy that, that has to dial it back? Like all those emotions, he's a real human being. So he's like, no, nah, I'm, I'm doing what I do. I've been sacrificing. I don't know. Hey. When you bring up Jordan Poole, do you think like part of the culture is kind of like the standard structure? I know like the Warrior stuff is kind of like already cemented clearly how mm-hmm. it is. But sometimes I think culture, I remember I played for a team once. We'd be like 25th in defense, like 18th in assists, like in all these th- like categories that really matter. And we sit there talking about winning or like literally it's like, I don't know about you, but there's no system where you're going to be terrible at defense, terrible at offense. <laughs> I mean, or, or in assists or ball movement. And we are really, and then we're going to try to beat the team up the street. And that's not me saying that off the wild. Like I thought we overachieved and those guys did like, unbelievable but when you sit here it's like Nick, like that don't add up so like eventually when jordan Poole's coming down it's like nah like if i wasn't good enough y'all tell me to take a hike but mm. now i'm doing everything i'm supposed to do and i want a ring 
My job ain't to hit But the he's not doing everything he's supposed to do. That's what y'all are not understanding. The brother, when he wants to play make, he can pass that rock, y'all. I've watched a bunch of games of him being able to pass. Boy, when he wants to pass, whoo, he could be a great playmaker. And I've said that before in my prior videos. I said, if JP got his defense better, his efficiency better, and stopped being in tunnel vision so freaking much, he would be an amazing point guard. Amazing point guard. But the problem is, bro, he just wants to score. That's the problem. And that's my issue with him. Because like I said, I've seen this man literally run away from defense. I've seen him run away from defense. And it's embarrassing, bro. How can you think that you're on the level of Stephen Curry and Clay and all of them when you don't even do the intangibles right? You can't do one thing good and think that means, oh, wow, I should be able to now do what you guys do. That's a weird-ass mentality, by the way. That's a weird mentality to have. Now, do I believe that Clay should have started over him? No. No, because I think he earned it. I think he did earn it. And I honestly do believe that also was a part of the downfall of Golden State last year. Is Steve Kerr sucking off his favorites. And that pisses me off, too. Because I truly do believe that jo Jordan Poole should have still started and Clay should have came off the bench and took his time. And still allow JP, because I think that also messed with his confidence too, personally. I, I believe that Steve, and I, again, I have a lot of problems with Steve Kerr as well too, bro. I have a lot of problems with Steve Kerr that a lot of y'all don't really pay attention to. But that right there pissed me off because Jordan Poole was hooping in the regular season. He was. We all know he was hooping. We all know he was. So in my head, I'm thinking, all right, let's keep it going, right? Clay comes back, plays him. And a lot of people weren't thinking about his confidence or how the relationship with the team, none of that. Y'all didn't care. All y'all cared about was Clay being back and, and, and him being back. That's it. I, on the other hand, said to myself, this might mess, with, mess us up in the future. Because you have the Draymond Green situation. Now you got this. Now you got him basically probably saying to himself, damn, man, I put all this work in, bro, for him to come back in and take the spot already like that. You're going to feel some kind of way about it, bro. You are. I don't care who you are. Don't care. But that's one thing I, I, I like. I understand from George Poole's frustration that that really is true, though. I do understand that, and I didn't agree with that either. I did not agree with that. The robe. Yeah. It's to get them boys up out of there. Yeah, 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 yeah. This isn't the guy you substitute. It's the ones you don't want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you're the second leading scorer on that team, bro. That's tough, because if somebody trying <laughs> trying to be the leading scorer on that mark. Mm -hmm. This is true. Know? This is true. And Am I wrong for saying that, JJ? No. I think there's a little bit to unpack there. I'm going to let him unpack. Yeah, because it's a lot more than just score. That's what I'm saying. You talking about just scoring. Bro, every bucket that... every I'll tell you this, bro. You got to think about it, bro. Every bucket he was getting, he was getting scored on ridiculously right after. They were hunting him. They were hunting JP, bro. Like, I don't think y'all understand this. Y'all are so obsessed with scoring. Don't understand. Hey, bro. Cool. The brother was scoring. Absolutely. He was also getting lit up, too. Bad. Like, really bad. You feel me? Like, I, 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 like I said, bro, it, it's, it's, it sucks because I want to see bro do great. But what I don't like is when people sit there and act as if that it's just, oh, he scored this amount of points. We should just back off from him. No. He doesn't do a lot of things, bro. He really doesn't. And it needs to be discussed correctly and respectfully. Or disrespectfully, I really don't care. But I ain't gonna disrespect my dog like that. Pack the Jordan Poole part. I'll pack the first part. Yeah, and it was it was it was hard for me to try to navigate it because this you know how locker rooms you've been in the locker room and that's this is on every team. Oh yeah, you know, I'm locker room. a hilarious conversation in one locker room where uh, on the bench we start saying they playing uh, buddy ball. <laughs> they only passing to each other, and somebody on the on the bench supposed to be with us went and told those guys. And I'm like, damn, you were you were in on the conversation, and now we having a team meeting. Those two guys is coming down, are coming at us like, well, you're talking about buddy, buddy ball, blah 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 blah. And then I had one of my guys that didn't play told like, you know, a guy that he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. He probably will be. He was like, how you gonna get mad at us and talk about you love the coach and you mad at us, but you always talking. You don't want to talk shit about the coach the most. <laughs> and the guy was like, man, I should beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but the guy was right. Man, I should be. <laughs> but it was funny because yeah. I'm saying all that because I've been in like many situations where you walk into a locker room 
And if you talk to one guy, the other guy's mad. Mm. And if you talk to that guy, the other guy's mad. And I'm not saying like, I'm talking about situations like five, six years ago. So I'm not talking about last year. And it's like, those are really, those things can kill you at the end of the day True. as a team. True. And so uh, we talk about Jordan Poole. Bro, he had, I compare it to the JaVale McGee situation with Shaq and the Fool. And I played with JaVale on two different teams. So I miss you, JaVale. My God, do I miss JaVale McGee. I've seen his work ethic. I've seen him lock in. I've seen him dominate games. And I've heard JP's I've a crazy hard worker too, bro. One, and his falls look so awkward that it's 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 a funny in the moment and then it's magnified and then now you're taking one moment away from his 20 minutes where he actually played good. Mm. And Jordan Poole had defensive moments last year. And it's my brother. Like, I would be like, like, bro, like, I'm about to flip sides with these fans. <laughs> if, if you fall on purpose one more time to not play defense. <laughs> I had to joke. He's my brother. You get what I'm saying? Come on. And I'm telling y'all, last year, he I'm not, I'm not talking about two years prior. I'm talking about just last year in general, bro. Last year, bro, he did that a lot, bro. He did a lot. He was falling to the ground a lot, bro. Even when he had the ball in his hand. You know what I mean, bro? I was I was watching the game, bro. I'm like, yo, bro, just play defense, please, man. I'm like, it's okay. And I'll tell you this, too. He'll play defense, and he'll be so bad with his hands, he'll, he'll get in foul trouble. So it's kind of like damn if he do, damn, damn if he doesn't. You know, it, it, it's, it's sick, bro. It's sick. Brother, he's my brother. He knows this. Like, I love him to death. But I would tell him, Jordan, it looks like you're trying not to try. Do you know how much energy it takes to, to try, try to, to, not to not try? To try? Yeah, man. It takes less energy to try. <laughs> 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 like, like you're really faking playing defense, basically. You're, you're, you're pretending to play defense. That's what he's basically saying. You're pretending to play defense, and you're really not. And again, it's like, I don't know. This is, this is why when I watched FIBA, it was such a big difference, bro, that I enjoyed because the defense was such a, a joy to watch as well, too, as well as the ball movement, you know, and the passion. But with JP, bro, it was like, if he didn't have the ball in his hand, he looked so disinterested. He looked so disinterested, you know? And the funny thing is, you he could play off ball. He could play off ball. But it was just odd to me, bro. Again, people were complaining and saying, oh, Draymond Green effect, but you said nothing about this during the regular season. Now the playoffs come up and all of a sudden it's a Draymond Green effect when he's not doing anything. Stop. Stop. Get some help. Stop. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know exactly Stop. what you're saying. So, I know exactly what you're but saying. But then it was, uh, it looked like it could have been a, a rebel in there. Mm. Like, no, man, I'm second on the team in scoring. Yep. And you know how we grew up when we first got in the league? If you were a bucket, you got to take off on the other end. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like Kyle Culver, if he gave up 30, he loves talking about his Philly teammates. <laughs> like he used to he used to Kyle Culver was nice about how Lou Williams couldn't defend. <laughs> oh, I was so mad about that. Cause my comment on Lou, Lou was Lou, Lou couldn't, yeah. I don't know anybody that can stay in front of Lou Williams. Mm-hmm. So it confuses me as to why Lou Williams can't keep anybody in front of him. <laughs> and we just talked about Lou earlier too. Lou was a bucket. Lou literally was instant offense. You knew what you got out of Lou. You got barely defense and buckets. Jordan Poole, you you don't know, bro. And that was the problem. You didn't know what you got. Y'all can sit there and keep bringing up the, the 20-something points per game, blah, 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 blah. Bro, that's all cute. But when it came down to it, the brothers drop off, him and Clay, by the way, were crazy. And no one seems to want to talk about it. Except just Jordan Poole or they say no you gotta talk about Clay too okay both can be right right and I, it wasn't like a knock I was like joking because the article was about my defense so I was I'm I can be like I can have a JJ Redick in me or I can be like a dickhead on like you know we give backhanded compliments mm -hmm. so I actually was giving Lou Williams a compliment but I was killing them at the same time. But it just come back in a compliment. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Philadelphia is the worst place for a guy like me mm. to be that way. Like, front page of the paper, Andre McNabb. Like, the best player in Philadelphia Eagles history is not liked by the city. <laughs> Ooh.
school. Be a digital detective. Enroll in a new Google cybersecurity system. I hate you. Good video. I enjoyed that. Now, the reason why I want to talk about that mainly is because season's almost around the corner. And I love Jordan Poole. I love Jordan Poole. I always will love Jordan Poole, bro. But I've seen too many people sit there and defend him. And I'm getting it's to the point that's like he's exempt from criticism. It's like just because the bro was he scored this amount of points. Oh my god, you can't talk bad about him. Bro, his game is very flawed. Very flawed. Very flawed. And this year's gonna be another learning curve for him. I think last year was tough because the Draymond and Green situation. And uh just I don't think you want to be there anymore, man. And uh Golden State itself, they did another typical Golden State. They handled the situation wrong. They did, man. Um, the KD situation, and now this. They love giving their legends the benefit of the doubt, man. But I don't know, man. I I, I wasn't a fan. I think Draymond should have been punished very severely because uh it was just wild to me. And I was like, I was like, aren't you the same guy that trash talks like tr trash talks crazy, but you can't handle Jordan Poole? Make it make sense to me, man. I don't know what was said. I really don't care. If you talk all the trash Draymond Green does, but you can't handle little Jordan Poole. I got I got nothing to say to you, big dog. I got nothing to say to you. But let me know in the comments down below. What do you think, man? Uh, what was your problems with Jordan Poole? What was your problems with Clay Thompson? What was your problems with Golden State in itself last year? Let me know in the comments down below, please. It's your boy Melly, and I'm signing out. But per usual, peace, love. And keep that drip immaculate at all times, my brothers and sisters. Stay easy, breezy, beautiful, sexy, amazing, awesome, elegant, inspirational, sensational, healthy. But most importantly, drink water, my beautiful brothers and sisters. Road to 10K is the goal for next year. If we get it this year, I will, I will strip naked in my bedroom by myself. You will not see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'll be very pleased, man. And I know y'all would be too, man. But... Appreciate y'all, man. Keep pulling up, man. And uh, let's see where, we, let's see where we, we go in this world of YouTube, man. Love y'all, man. Bow. Have a great day, man. Great Friday. Peace, y'all.